The Lives of the Saints by Father Alban Butler, July 24th, Saints Romanus and David, Martyrs and Patrons of Muscovy. The history of the conversion of the Russians, now called Muscovites, to the faith of Christ has been perplexed by the mistakes of many who have treated this point of history. The learned Jesuit father, Antony Posavin, was betrayed into many falsities concerning this people. And upon his authority, some have pretended that the Muscovites received the faith from the Greek schismatics and at the same time adhered to their schism. Then, which nothing can be more notoriously false, as Hensinius and Papabrochius show. Stilting, another learned Bollandist, has demonstrated by an express dissertation that the Muscovites were at first Catholics and that even in the time of the Council of Florence, the Catholics and schismatics in Russia made two equal halves. The Greek schism was formed by Cyrillarius several years after the conversion of the Russians. The schism indeed of Phocius was a short prelude to it. Cedrinus, Zonaris, and some others relate that an army of Russians besieged Constantinople in the time of the Emperor Michael III when Photius held that sea, and that being obliged to raise the siege, they obtained certain Greek priests from Constantinople who instructed them in the Christian faith. This first mission Baronius places in 853, Pagi in 861, but this must either be understood of some tribe of Russians in Bohemia, where St. Cyril then preached, or these authors must have confounded together things which happened at different times, for the Emperor Constantine Porphyrogeneta, who lived near that time and could not but be acquainted with this transaction, says both in his life of his grandfather Basil the Macedonian and in his book On Administering the Empire that the Russians besieged the city in the time of Photius, but that they were converted to the faith by priests sent at their request from Constantinople in the time of Basil the Macedonian and the patriarch St. Ignatius, whom that prince restored upon his ascending the throne in 867, which also appears from Zonaris. The first plant of the faith in this nation was the Holy Queen Helen, called before her baptism Olga. She was wife to the Duke Ihor, or Igor, who undertook an expedition against the city of Constantinople as Simeon Metaphrastes, the monk George, Cedrinus, Zonaris, and Kuropalites relate. Having been repulsed by the generals of the emperors Romanus and Constantine, he was slain by the Droilans in his return. His widow Olga, with great valor and conduct, revenged his death, vanquished the Droilans, and governed the state several years with uncommon prudence and courage. When she was almost seventy years old, she resigned the government to her son Swatoslas, and going to Constantinople was there baptized, taking the name of Helen. Many place this event in 952, which date seems most agreeable to the Greek historians, but Colsinius and Stilting infer from the chronology of the Dukes of Russia that she seems to have been baptized in 945. We are expressly assured by Constantine Porphyrogeneta that it happened in 946. She returned into her own country, and by her zealous endeavors brought many to the faith, but was never able to compass the conversion of her son, who was probably withheld by reasons of state. She died in 970 or 978. Her grandson, Uladimir, who succeeded Swatoslas, asked by a solemn embassy, and obtained in marriage Anne, sister to the two emperors Basil and his colleague and brother Constantine. Nicholas Chrysoberga, the Orthodox Patriarch of Constantinople, a person always zealous in maintaining the communion of the See of Rome, at that prince's request sent into Muscovy one Michael with other preachers, who baptized Uladimir and married him to the princess about the year 988. This duke founded near Kiev the great monastery of the Crypte in favor of the abbot St. Antony, and died, according to Cultinius, in 1008. His two sons, Saints Boris and Hleba or Kleba, called in Latin Romanus and David, were murdered by the usurper Swatopelk, their impious brother, in 1010. It was their zeal for the faith of Christ which gave occasion to their death. Jaroslas, another brother, defeated the usurper and obtained the principality. His daughter Anne was married to Henry I, King of France, in 1044, and became the foundress of the Church of St. Vincent at Senlis. Romanus and David are honored in Muscovy on the 24th of July. Their remains were translated into a church which was built in their honor at Vislegorod in 1072, the ceremony being performed with great pomp by George V, Archbishop of Kiau, and several other bishops in presence of Izaslas, Swatoslas, and Usevolod, 
princes of Russia, and a great train of noblemen. The Synod of Zamosky in 1720, which was approved by the Congregation to Propaganda Fide and confirmed by Pope Benedict XIII, reckons among the holidays of precept which are kept by the Catholic Russians in Lithuania and other provinces, the feast of these two martyrs, celebrated on the 24th of July, and that of the translation of their relics on the 2nd of May. The Catholic Russians in Lithuania and Poland keep no festival of any other Muscovite saints except of these two martyrs. But the Muscovites honor several other saints of their own country, several among whom flourished and doubtless were placed by them in their calendar before their schism, as Papa Brook and Joseph Asimani observe. Such are the Queen Helen or Olga on the 11th of July, who died, according to Coltinius, in 978. Vladimir, her grandson, Duke of the Russians, and son of Swatoslas on the 15th of July, who was baptized in 990, died in 1014, and was buried in Our Lady's Church at Kiev. Antony, abbot, a native of Russia, who embraced the monastic state upon Mount Athos, and returning to Kiev, became the patriarch of that order in his own country, and on a mountain half a mile from the town founded, about the year 1020, the great Russian monastery of Pizari, or the Cryptai, in which the Archimandrite of all the Russian monks resides, and the Archbishop of Kiev has an apartment. Antony died in 1073, on the 10th of July, on which his festival is kept in Muscovy. This monastery is famous for the Cryptai, or vaults, in which the bodies of many saints and monks who lived above 600 years ago remain uncorrupted and fresh. Agapetus, disciple of Antony, at the Cryptae, famous for miracles, honored on the 1st of June. Athanasius, monk at the Cryptae, on the 2nd of December, he was a native of Trapassand, who, by the liberality and protection of the Emperor Nicephorus Phocas, founded the great monastery on Mount Athos in Macedonia. He is honored by the Greeks and Muscovites on the 5th of July. The lives of these and several other ancient monks of this house were written by Polycarp, who died in 1182. The Grand Duke Alexander, surnamed Newski, who died in 1262, and is honored on the 30th of April. Sergius, an abbot, is honored by the Muscovites on the 25th of September. He died in 1292 and was never involved in the schism, as Papabroch, Colcinius, and Jos Asimani show. This Sergius was born at Roslo, founded the Monastery of the Holy Trinity at Rudosno, 60 Italian miles from Moscow, the richest and most numerous in Muscovy, in which are sometimes two or three hundred monks. The body of Sergius is kept there incorrupt and is much visited out of devotion from Moscow, sometimes by the czars. These and several others who are named in the Muscovite calendar with the most eminent saints of the Eastern and Western churches lived either before or when this nation was not engaged in the Greek schism. But to these saints, the Muscovites add some few who died since their separation from the Catholic communion as Photius, Archbishop of Kiau, whose principal merit consisted in the obstinacy with which he maintained the schism 